Hey guys, this is KF here with Tape, and today you join me for episode 4 of Solar Civilization, and today we start with a small satellite launch. We have to make our money somehow, and the telecoms companies have been begging the space agency to uh, put some communication satellites in orbit, so that is what we're doing. Obviously we need communications down on Kerbin. Um, obviously right now I don't have, uh, well I don't have anything like, uh, yeah, what is it? That uh, thing with the uh, the mod with the um, it's not Telemachus, it's uh, remote tech. I don't have that installed, so this won't actually serve a huge amount of purpose other than kind of aesthetics. But I'm going to put it up there anyway. So this um, uh, this rocket is one of my solid fuel rockets, which uses solid fuel for the main stage, so it is much cheaper. Although costs aren't implemented right now, I do like to try and keep theoretical costs down. And hell, they'll be implemented one day, so I might as well get used to it. And now that these rockets are, thr you can throttle them down in the uh, VAB. They're very, very versatile. But the up, um, upper stage is liquid fuel because it would have been quite a task to make it solid fuel. Maybe one day I will make a fully solid fuel rocket, like the uh, Laddie spacecraft that went to the moon on nothing but solid fuel. Anyway, now we must perform our cruise up to Apoaps and then our burn. Uh, the satellite is uh, fairly simple. Uh, it's got a lot of batteries. Got some uh, antenna. Uh, the the main kind of uh, probe, obviously, and uh, a lot of solar panels. I don't have the rotating ones yet, so I've just used lots of um, what are they? What well, lots of uh, static ones on either side. And because uh, the decoupler force is quite big, I didn't. I put my periaps a little lower so that um, the stay uh, the uh, decoupler force would boost it into a fairly circular orbit. But there is a Mechjeb unit on this, so I will deorbit it and maybe try to land it in our ongoing effort to uh, make um, rockets reusable and uh, reduce costs for the people, so that we can have a full, a uh, fully accessible civilization in space. And as uh, the heat, as the engine begins to heat up in the heating effect, you can see it's kind of heating like it would if the engine was lit. Um, we are coming back at orbital velocity, but luckily these engines are very heat resistant because we do force burning hydrogen through them um, for hours on end. So, uh, we're so we'll so it comes back fine, which is very lucky. And uh, we're fairly low now. I've got the surface information open, and uh, we're fairly low across uh, above the ground. But I keep picking up too much lateral velocity, and we crash and destroy it all but the fairing ring and the mechjeb unit which is you know better than nothing and then that falls through the surface into hell anyway the main part of this video is going to the moon so the first thing we will be sending is a small lander probe um ah damn a wasp just got in my room <laughs> anyway this lander probe um will be uh landing on the moon and returning to orbit and then a manned vehicle will go and pick up the data from orbit it will be a test to our a test of orbital rendezvous which is the first one we've done um ever and it will be around the moon it's um yeah it's good you know and then uh, we can also get eva reports and crew reports from orbit on the moon and then soon we will be landing men on the moon and one day we will make a moon base anyway um we're beginning our gravity turn. It's a little late, as I keep ending up doing, because Faram Aerospace prevents me from tipping too far over, or the drag at the top of the rocket will be greater than the drag at the bottom, and we will flip. Anyway, ditch the bottom stage, and I'll burn into orbit with this. And the stage above it is the transfer stage out to the moon, fairly small. And then there is fuel on the probe, obviously, for landing and returning to orbit. Um, but because of the... Uh, efficiency of this uh, engine we're using now we do have quite a bit of we will have quite a bit of fuel left over in this stage which we'll use to boost us out to the moon but it's always good to have a little extra fuel um it could do it without it but yeah eh, might as well anyway we must prepare to go to the moon now so uh, everything looks nominal i i was just tabbing through fuel there i guess so we'll set it as our target and uh well we'll change our sending node uh, quickly, so well, we'll change our inclination. I meant to say quickly, so that we are on the equator, so that we will land somewhere near to the equator and be on an orbit somewhere near to the equator, so that it is much easier to um, plan uh, our rendezvous. Anyway, there is the moon, and we shall burn for it. An odd kind of flip there, which probably screwed up my inclination, but who cares? It's only space travel, hunches and guesses, as I always say. That stage burned out, um, so we'll just complete our transfer with this. 
uh, smaller stage, and that is us in uh, on a trajectory for the moon, about a 50 kilometer periaps. No doubt that will change due to floating point errors. I mean, uh, solar radiation forces or something, I don't know. So actually the uh, solar radiation does emit a force upon spacecraft, that's why you can use solar sails, and that's why your orbit will never be exactly what it should be under or orbital mechanics. Um, the uh, spacecraft that went to Mercury, I think the one that's currently there, which is just mapping the whole surface, they got a little bit more fuel budget by um, using their solar panels as solar sails, so that was, you know, it was a, like a three week maneuver though, so that's very hard to plan. Anyway, we've um, circularized our orbit and put it down on the surface because we were in a in good in um, a good place to land on the midlands. This is where I want my first landing to be because it will be easy to remember and I can't plant a flag right now. I do tend to plant flags telling me where I've landed on the moon so that um, I don't return to the biomes until I want to. Anyway, so uh, the midlands are fairly easy to hit because they're huge and we'll ditch that stage with a little fuel in it because we do need to switch over to the lander now so that we can use our landing legs. And because this has tons of fuel and, you know, might as well use it. Um, I've angled the solar panels slightly up so that uh, they'll catch sun even on the surface, although it won't be there for long because, um, well, because the uh, astronaut is itching to get to the moon. Um, because, well, he's never been to the moon before. And we're about to touch down nice and slowly back into one times time accelerate. I did forget to say most of that was at four times time accelerate as usual. And then a perfect touchdown. Anyway, we must gather our data. We already gained one from high above the moon, just uh, finishing off that with a repeat experiment, and that's a hundred science from the materials bay, and uh, the mystery goo will give us 40 science. That will go to unlocking and researching many a new part, hopefully to build planes is what I'm really shooting for right now. I'm trying to um, build aircraft because one day we will build SSTOs which will reduce the uh, cost of launching rockets just as much as reusable rockets maybe. But anyway, we must go back to orbit. Alrighty then. And back into four times time accelerate because uh, this video would be very long otherwise. Um, this is probably one of the first videos that doesn't have like a billion missions in it because um, well I want to be I want to be going into planetary you know fairly not too soon I mean I want to be just be doing stuff that's interesting rather than hey I got to orbit hey I went to orbit again hey look at this orbit anyway we must send a man to the moon Jebediah Kerman is at the helm because he's automatically in spacecraft most of the time this is a fairly small rocket I've actually managed to I think KW parts have helped quite a lot, so it's a little cheaty, but I have managed to scale down my moon rockets considerably. Um, even with KW parts, they used to be quite big, uh, but now, well, I've just got rather good at being efficient because I am obsessed in efficiency. Anyway, that stage burns out and will not be reused because that is not contracted in this mission. This is going to the moon with no screw-ups is exact words the uh, Na uh, the not NASA, the uh, Kerbal Space Program guy said. He was like, you shall not screw up. You can't really see the spacecraft in, well, not in the side of the fairings anymore, but you can't really see it brilliantly now, but it has a small fuel tank, an LVT-45, and some RCS, and solar panels and batteries. You'll see it better. But uh, I underestimated, well, overestimated the power of this LVT-45, and we've gone over our Apple apps. So now that is getting higher than we want and not in the right place, sadly. Um, but we do get into orbit, luckily. Um, but now we have to perform our burn at Apple apps, and it's about 240 kilometers above the uh, above Kerbin. So we are going to lose a little fuel, but um, luckily we still have quite a bit left over in this uh, orbit stage. So it about cancels itself out, but we won't get to redo the mission, we don't have money for that, even with Apollo era funding. But anyway, we get a slightly annoying encounter, which means we have to perform um, a burn just basically pointing at the planet to uh, bring in our periaps, and then, what was that? Okay, I'm doing it again, I, I don't know, it must have been, I don't remember quick saving, must have accidentally quick loaded or something, or maybe... There was probably a mistake, and then I quick loaded. I don't tend to quick load though. Anyway, uh, well, now we're coming into the moon. We'll just uh, forget about that odd time glitch. We'll grab an EVA report and a crew report from high above the moon, and then uh, circularize our orbit. 
and plan our encounter with the probe. Um, yeah, and then we'll also get an EVA report from low above the moon, which isn't where we are right now, as I'll soon test. I may have left it in the video even. And I'm just testing how much it will take to get back to the moon, and that back to Kerbin even, we're at the moon. And it's only about a 290 delta V burn, and we have about 460, well, no, we have exactly 467 at uh, vacuum delta V left on this spacecraft, and some RCS, so um, everything will be fine. I didn't give it a huge budget, but I gave it enough of a budget. Anyway, an orbit later, we will um, be dropping our periaps down to encounter the probe. There is 10 days worth of life support on this spacecraft, as that was, uh, well, there was 11 days, actually, including the stuff in the pod. Uh, the government decided that they didn't want to risk a life, so they put as much as they could into the um, it, well, into the uh, spacecraft, so that the pub public don't lose faith in the space program. But anyway, now we're a, mooch uh, a mooching. That's not even close to approaching. We're approaching MLP one, the moon uh, la moon lander moon lander probe is what it is. A, a mooching? That's not even a word. What even? Anyway, now we'll use RCS to. Um, get closer to the uh, pod, but um, it, part of the mission is to do this in daylight so the astronaut can see exactly what they're doing, and if anyone is somehow watching this mission, then um, then they'll be able to see. <laughs> anyway, we get another EVA report from low over, the, low over the northwest crater, actually. So then we'll go and grab the data from the uh, uh, manned, not manned, moon lander probe um, you know, from its uh, computers and things. I guess. And uh, maybe at some point we'll put the uh, lunar probe. Lander probe. God damn it. I could. Jeez. Why do I keep forgetting that? Anyway, um, we'll probably per deorbit and send it into the surface, as that is what it is good for. Anyway, uh, we need to get close enough to grab the science from it. It's hard to tell from this perspective, but there we are. We're close at it. We've bumped into it. And now we must grab the science from the materials bay. Um, this will all probably go towards, well, probably to slightly bigger rockets, hopefully 2.5 meter parts, and uh, planes, a lot of that. Um, the military have been harking at us, asking if they can take a look at some of our rocket technology to see if they can make missiles. And uh, the space pro the space company, uh, the space space program is a little uh, a little unimpressed uh, by that because uh, they don't want their uh, their rocket technology to be going straight towards uh, military activity, but they, uh, that will um, be good for money, and uh, the military is a very nice military, so they probably won't kill anyone. Ah, storytelling and this stuff. Anyway, we should probably leave the moon now, because we must get back to uh, the Kerbal Space Center, and keep forgetting to cut the pauses out of the game. It's really hard to find me tabbing through it, sorry about that. But anyway, um, we must um, give our reports to the scientists so they can analyze it and hand it on to the engineers to tell them how to make spacecraft parts. Anyway, we're about to re-enter the atmosphere at sunrise, which is a good old view. So, we'll make sure there's enough electric charge in here to keep him warm for a uh, for the landing, and then we'll ditch that stage, and then a little race behind us because it's picked up a lot more drag than us, and it goes out of range, so we don't get to see it explode, which sucks because it is fun to see stuff explode. Anyway, um, nice view out of that window, which probably was marred by YouTube darkening my videos. Ugh. Anyway, uh, we finally dropped out of orbit, and I got to come uh, come down on the ocean just on the other side of that continent. So we must uh, deploy our parachutes. Wow, perfect timing with that, and land just off the coast, within swimming distance, but the Navy will pick them up, so uh, given that they're helping us pick up our spacecraft, maybe we'll take give them a look at a few solid rocket boosters in, a, in, a, in an effort to help their uh, fighting the, I don't know, uh, the, the evil Kerbals. I, I don't know, there's probably no wars going on. I mean, the only buildings are like two space centers, so I don't know what they'd be fighting over. But, um... Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It is coming to a close. We will be unlocking bigger parts and plane parts and going back to the moon and going to Minmus and eventually into planetary and putting bases everywhere. Um, 
Yeah, anyway, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, feel free to drop a like. That would be wonderful. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.